All right, we are live with another Cafe Crash. I am your host, Daniel Crozier, and I am with the phenomenally talented Sky Light for Serious. Hey, guys. <laughs> How are you, Sky? You know, I always thought your name was um, Crozier. Like, the, you know, when old people say uh, Target kind of oh. thing. <laughs> so when you just said Crozier, I'm like, what do I know? Jesus yeah. Christ. You yeah. Know? yeah. I, I think you, you say it uh, much uh, better, uh, slightly more eloquently. Crozier. Um, yeah, it's... Yeah, Crozier is the American dumbed down version. You know, when, when my ancestors uh, came across, uh, you know, to Ellis Island and got assigned the, the silly, you know, well, we, we got to make you fit in, so let's dumb it down. You know, I like both. Just to oh, thank you. Both <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, the, the French uh, uh, enunciation would be uh, Crozier. Uh, yeah, well, Crozier. Sometimes I hear Crozier. Oh, that's even, I like all of those, Dan. I mean. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I like, I like those too. I tend to, I'm lazy, so I stick to Crozier, you know, but. It, know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But if, if you that. watch uh, Metalocalypse, they Love have. It. Brendan Smalls, I mean. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They, they have a uh, general Crozier and I think his is with a Z. You know, I don't think I've ever put that together, but now that I know that, I feel so much better. Yeah, I was <laughs> like, like, oh. Cartoon, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're now uh, immortalizing cartoon royalty. Amazing. Love yeah, it. yeah. So, yeah, Sky, you know, let's get into it. Let's uh, yeah. you know, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you come from, and how you got into arts. So, um, my first art show was in a warehouse in San Antonio, Texas. And I met the girl in a strip club that I was bar bartending at. Hmm. Make that very clear. Bartending at. <laughs> and she was like, wow, these are actually really cool. I'm having this art show. And mm -hmm. I ended up going and um, I don't know if I threw up because it was so cold or because I was so nervous, but I oh. ended up with all my art on the wall and me just hiding in the corner and all these people like telling me how amazing these paintings and these drawings were. And uh -huh. I, I just couldn't take it. Um, I loved it, every part of it. And um, I didn't sell any pieces. I People asked me how much they were and I just didn't have an answer for it. And I didn't really understand what the art business really was. I didn't understand where, um, I, I guess I wanted to, um, just see what people said and where I would fit in. Mm -hmm. um, after that, it was kind of a gorilla thing. We would just find um, empty spaces and walls um, around clubs and throw up things and see if people reacted to them. Um, a lot of it was kind of experimental. We did a lot of um, shining lights onto buildings and seeing if people noticed <laughs> things like okay. that. Which um, kind of got us into trouble for a little bit, but um, I feel like um, a lot of it came from being swept up by other people, um, people that wanted to take you along with them as their posse, if you may say. Um, when I got to Phoenix, I fell in love with an artist, mm -hmm. and during one of his news interviews, I walked up to him with a painting I had for him as a present. And he ended up grabbing me and showing my painting on the news and saying, I'm an upcoming oh, artist. Cool. And, um, that was kind of how I got started in the public eye. Okay. Um, my art pretty much has changed so mm -hmm. many times. Um, I feel that I really didn't know what I was doing when I had all of the opportunities to really blow people's minds. Mm -hmm. um, we actually turned my friend's art gallery into a gallery. It was his house. Oh, and we, okay. would him up, we would kick him out every month and clean his whole house and <laughs> throw a bunch of art in there. He had a huge walk-in closet that we could just yeah. throw all his furniture, everything into. Wow. And it was right in the middle of the art district. It was called um, the Mainstay Gallery in Phoenix, Arizona. Okay. And it eventually was shuttered down. 
yeah. after we had utilized the building for um, a private amount of years, <laughs> the right. uh, fire marshal ended up just saying, hey, you guys can't really be here for another minute. So um, that'll do it. It was really a guerrilla kind of thing that started it all. Um, and after all that, I moved to Denver and I met you and um, I went through that metamorphosis and um, it was so great living um, with you in your area because we had all these open spaces and places wow. in the industrial area. Yeah, with so much room and so much, I guess, um, nobody was really watching us too much to see if we we're throwing any kind of underground events or anything. Um, um, just a lot of really urban art that was pissing everyone off pretty much going on everywhere around there, close to the train yards. Right. So right. Um, yeah, building those galleries was the next step in working on Santa Fe and mm. you know opening up the Doja Gallery and um, working with in the Rhino Arts District. Mm -hmm. So the, the next step was really to make um, spaces available for other artists to yeah. show their art. Yeah, that's um, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I remember uh, you know about the time you moved in. Um, you know that area was like yeah, like Rhinoceropolis. I think was just opening up next door. Yep. And uh, uh, and, and that we had no idea what was going on next door to us. I mean, I did, but maybe you didn't. <laughs> oh, I had no idea. Probably not. Well, like right right across the street, there's like all these um, what were they called? The little uh, dancers that dance on the, I don't know. Acrobats, if you right. may, may, you know. Aerial and um, yeah, you know, that's there was um, circus acts practicing all around in our neighborhood because mm -hmm. the ceilings were high enough and right. yeah, the beams, like great Denver beams, the great Denver beams. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's uh, there's all kinds of uh, yeah really fun things. The I, I remember when I moved in there um, at night, I was the only light on for blocks around. Yep. Um, so I would, yeah, uh, yeah. I think this is a little bit, a couple of years before you, but I would have homeless people, you know, come and knock on the door because, you know, at the time they knew I could, they could get a sandwich from me. It was so far out there. Mm -hmm. um, I remember moving in with you, and people were like, "When are we going to see you again?" <laughs> kind of thing. You know? Yeah. Far. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it, it, I mean, it was a pretty, pretty uh, weird and, and wild place. We had uh, the OFM, the Odom Femud uh, group that, uh, that I got to with Does all the, the you know, Does everybody know about this group? Kind of. Uh, probably not, not so much. So Can I um, just give like a, yeah, give you correct that. me, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. So Odom Femud. Right. Short OFM. Right. Is a kabuki live performance theater group with mm -hmm. real gore right and sometimes the audience would have to wear protective clothing <laughs> because things may fly and don't wear anything that's expensive or could get uh, hurt along the way right and be prepared to move uh quickly as far away no they don't have to move the ones yeah. in the front were like diehards, you know. <laughs> like we'll take it. It's it's very much like going to a, a lowbrow guar show, or it's like a B movie circus Olay type thing. Or being inside a real comic book. Mm, true. With, okay. um, and the lighting was so. Um, the lighting was great. The lighting would cover like the red light would cover everything, but the bright lights would come on, and then the music. It had live music, which are yeah. like the. We had a live band. Taiko yeah. kind of drums kind of going on, right? Yeah, yeah. We we would do uh, as as we progressed. It was you know kind of a fight choreographed play. Uh, we mm -hmm. would be using uh, practice weapons on on stage and um, yeah yeah things would be hooked up to fake blood and, and I had the just absolute honor of stepping in for one of the nymphs. I think they were called the nymphs. Right, right. Yeah. I think uh, I was, was the first able to rip your face off in front of um, many people and um, who knows what kind of food substances went flying that looked like inner gore, but it was one of the most 
proud moments of my life. And I am one of the happiest when you asked me to literally tear your skin off on stage. Oh, that's right. So yeah. many people. And um, we talked about this before, but um, Dan really said to me, he said, um, be as violent, not as aggressive, I would say, as you would like. And I didn't think at first that he meant that, but as soon as we started practicing, I realized that he's totally up for um, me ripping his skin off on stage. And it was so fun, it really was. And Dan really was the star of that whole thing. I mean, the back, the backdrop, the brains, everything. Um, I, I'm sure he has links to maybe live performances to you still, hopefully. What's that? Do, Do I have links to um, any live performances? Or no, uh, we we ended uh, OFM in, in 2011, I think, and uh, we uh, it, it, it was a lot of fun. I wore <laughs> way, so way too many hats, um, <laughs> you know. Oh, it, it looks like uh, Chris just chimed in. Hello, Is it a friend. It's my old friend. Hello, Chris. <laughs> yes. Um, so, yeah, all the people who are supposed to be here aren't, but I'll make them regret the day. Let's just oh, say that. That's, that's <laughs> right. you know, uh, we, we, Our viewership usually, you know, comes comes and goes, and then, and then it, I mean, it lives uh, out there on the uh, the internet. The uh, internet. Uh, so people can keep uh, revisiting it, and, and you can always, you know, uh, reshare it with, on YouTube. Um, oh, gonna happen for sure yeah uh but i, I think with uh with ofm uh, i remember you uh participated in in you know the first show maybe the first couple shows i think it was like the first couple shows after one of your nymphs got scared and run away <laughs> she ran away probably. yeah <laughs> probably it yeah it was it was a pretty bizarre uh interesting thing it was very very abstract there wasn't any dialogue everything was I, to this day have never seen anything like it <laughs> um, other than a war show, I guess, but I mean, it was totally different than war, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It, it was its own thing. Yeah. Yeah. Initially we, we started out trying to, uh, do our own version of like a guar band thing. And then we just realized, oh, um, you know, we're, we're more open to interpretation and, and uh, I know. just remember how hard you worked on all of those stage props. And oh, they were fun. Yeah. Absolutely. The hat. I mean, how, how much did one of those helmets weigh? Well, or, originally the, the real ones I think were made out of uh, fiberglass and, and they were um, made from uh, actual like, uh, you know, like batters helmets or football helmets. So they weighed a lot. And, right. and we, we quickly realized we can't do that. Um, it's so, you it's know, a I don't hazard. <laughs> or if they just kept falling off. Yeah. And, and, the, and then uh, we went to like a large scale um, foam and latex uh, yeah. headgear. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was a lot of fun. So that, that was a little bit more up my alley, you know, sculpting something from scratch and, doing all the mold making and yeah, basically like you would do uh, for any uh, feature film or something. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Or, or Halloween, uh, you know, face masks and stuff. So, yeah, and so I was going to say, do you remember um, the day I moved into your house? Um, mm -hmm. you, were casting, you were cost, you were casting zombies for ah. a movie and ah. you had, them, you had them hanging in your, when you walk in, they had them hanging. <laughs> Um, and I, didn't, I didn't really realize that they were fake, you know, it was like I'm moving some stuff in. It was my first day with a key. And yeah. There's holes lying everywhere. There's like the ah, zombies ah. drying from the ceiling. And I think I gave a pretty good scream. Oh, really? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to, to spook you. Um, no. Well, my cat was kind of snuggled in between all of the skulls. So I kind of yeah. realized like, oh, hey, like, he warned me about this. But um, they just looked so realistic and so beautiful, beautiful, as beautiful as hanging corpses can look. They were just. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. It's like dried bacon. Yeah. It's, exactly. It's, yeah. That's always fun. <laughs> ah, ah. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, that, that, that was a pretty fun thing. 
But uh, I think also like during that time you were uh, doing a lot of uh, fashion, fashion designing, yeah. uh, modeling too. And I did a lot of that before they let me get tattoos and now I can have tattoos, which was like pretty much all I wanted really. You just wanted to do tattoos? That's pretty much it. You know, they was like, don't get any more tattoos. Um, I did the modeling. The modeling was fun. Um, I did it for some really weird creative people, some strange photographers, um, lots of graveyard stuff. Lots of... Okay. What? Okay. Yeah, lots of... Um, yeah, let's shoot in this graveyard or you'd be perfect for this Morticia Adams kind of house that we found, you know? Yeah. Um, and that was fun while I was younger, I think. Um, I think I really enjoyed kind of documenting my aging process <laughs> over the years. <laughs> well, you, you, to me, you really haven't aged. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, to me, you really haven't aged. You know, yeah, yeah, you, you, you kind of, uh, you remind me of the same. Well, I did as go to skin school, so um, I, I did go to, I did go to Paul Mitchell. Um, oh, so I, I do, um, I do dermatology, but not medical dermatology and okay. um, esthetician work. So yeah, I do help people with skin problems, but don't call me to help you like reverse your lines. I can, but I'm just not. With COVID, I'm just not in that field right now. Right, it's almost right. impossible to um, work in that field right now. Doing, I mean, hair might be safe for some, but even massage and um, other real crystally things that I'm doing is really not a good time. Yeah, right. Yeah, how how are you? Uh, you know, uh, uh, coping with uh, the the pandemic and and, and everything. Um, so the weirdest thing, Dan, um, I was working my butt off as a bartender, um, as a waitress, making 80, 100 bucks a day, um, trying to pay a babysitter, doing all these things. And mm. once COVID hit, I really kind of started focusing on what I have. Okay. And I started taking pictures of my inventory. And okay. I realized that I had so much inventory. I had all these drawings. I had all these paintings and things. I just kind of gave up on even thinking that people were even going to respond to my art. Like everyone has no money, everyone's struggling. Right. Um, all of a sudden it was just crazy. Everyone wanted art and it just blew really up. And maybe it's because I'm sitting at home and looking at walls that they're usually not in. Right. You know, usually at work or usually somewhere else. And um, I just got really, I got really grateful. Honestly, I'm humbled by the response that I got. Um, I have been doing really, really well with my art. As much as I put it out there and as much as I um, put my work into it and really respond to people and make it available, I think that's really important is to make it available. Um, I have found a wonderful response to people buying my artwork and supporting mm -hmm. my art. Um, knowing that I'm a single mother, I'm out of work, I have my son, but it's really just people that I've met, honestly, my connections. Um, I just know thousands of people and I care, yeah. I care about people and yeah. um, I'm just really grateful and humbled for the response that I've gotten. Um, people have gotten me through um, this whole pandemic Mm -hmm. And um, people have even asked me, like, hey, I want to help. And I'm waiting for that piece that you make that I want, you know. So I do have a client list that I do keep in touch with, like, hey, here's my new stuff. And um, I'm working on a cartoon right now, which oh, is um, something totally out of my knowledge of the area, I guess. Right. But um, I wrote a cartoon, and I guess it's a lot like um, – home movies a little bit oh, cool. <laughs> right it's pretty simple maybe some mr cats kind of feel to it you know <laughs> nice. but, um, i'm starting to hire people to do some character development for me to oh, cool. kind of um give me a visualization of my characters 
Um, so I'm mixing my comedy, which I'm working really hard on with my art. So um, it's all kind of coming together. And I feel like COVID has given us that time. Yeah, to, to kind and of work on back. things. Yeah. See what we have, see what we're working with. Yeah. And um, kind of really organize everything into a position that we have this time and we don't know how much of more we're going to have of it. Right, right. So why not really, really just come up with the most outrageous stuff that we can while we are too busy to have our brains do it for us, you know? Most, most definitely. Uh, so you, you mentioned comedy. Um, mm -hmm. So are you talking about like stand up or your writing so, comedy or, you know, this, this yes. I don't know about you. This is All new. I know. I was kind of, um, I was kind of keeping it. Actually, you, you, so, no, um, the cat's out of the bag. You better. You, you got a tight five. Let's so go. My, um, my comedy is great. Okay. Um. So I'm doing a little bit of both. My whole goal here is to become a writer for comedy and a creative writer for comedy. I want to come up with skits. I want to come up with jokes. I want to do all that stuff. But I feel like I can't do that until. I really have a reel or something to show for myself with my ideas. Mm -hmm. So I am practicing to do some more stand-up. I did two earlier, uh, two years ago, but I didn't record them or film them. It was kind of a on the spot kind of thing. Right. Um, but what's happening now is I am speaking with, let's say a mentor who's a comedian in LA. Nice. And he's gonna kind of teach me kind of how to um, direct my jokes in the right kind of way. And right. also he's gonna kind of point me in the right direction on where I want to end up. Cool. Um, I just decided that comedy is kind of my whole deal. <laughs> I just can't go my whole life without laughing anymore. Right. And um, so I have some stand up that I'm working on where my roommate's actually putting some fake laugh tracks in for me. <laughs> I bet Tad, yeah, yeah. Those are going to be released as soon as possible. I'm um, still kind of organizing my thoughts on that. But um, I'm planning um, about two or three stand-up sessions, maybe 15, 20 minutes long, okay. uh, where I can actually record uh, my thoughts and send them out to people and see what they think and see um, if I can work with. Nice, nice. I'm not trying to be a famous stand-up. But well, this, this no. seems uh, this seems uh, really exciting because uh, this is something I didn't know about you. So so I'm 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 really happy that uh, you know you're 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 dipping your toe into this. I mean, um, yeah, it's it's nothing like like baptism by fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the red nose. The, yeah, it's a it, it's a good good good. Use it. It feels good. Oh, I, I'm sure it's you know it's for those it's a yeah it's a nose insulator I get it you know for those cold nights you know whatever Pennywise. I just want my son to grow up laughing and yeah. um you know I um I have so many amazing ideas and um they just can't I I literally wake up in the middle of the night and I'm like oh my gosh and then just writing right. stuff down so well, that's, that's more than wanting to be a comic. Mm -hmm. And maybe people will like drag me out on the stage um, at some point. But um, more than being a comic, I just really want to, I really want to kind of break the rules even of feminine comedy, you know, how hard it is for a woman to um, say things that, and you can totally go against me. But it, I, I feel it's harder for a woman to say certain things than it is for a man. And I also feel that there's certain things a man can say that's harder to say for a woman. All the whole thing. Maybe, but uh, but I, I think it's 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 much harder to be a female uh, stand up, you know, even even in this day and age. Um, Absolutely. I've, we, have, I've, uh, we have more to work with when it comes to um, perspective. People um, look at us a little bit differently and um, expect a little bit different. I mean, we have Joan Rivers starting in a ball gown, and the next thing she's crawling around on stage screaming. You know, she's a great forerunner for um, all of us. So um, the whole comedy thing is even tied into my art. 
So I'm classically trained. I went to art school um, for many years. <laughs> where, where did you go to art school? Okay, so I started at a community college because my um, my parents wanted me to go to college, and I picked the I picked the college with the best sculptures. So all the sculptures at the college were made by Paulo Soleri, who um, made Arco Santi, which is a weird dwelling in the middle of the desert. I'm yeah. not lying, y'all check it out. Um, so I ended up going to college, just having all these weird random classes, um, elderly yoga, <laughs> which elderly, it was like archeology span to elderly huh. yoga to, so I started there. I did all my drawings, um, then I went to oil paintings and then I went to Italy. So I ended up going to Italy. I went to Italy for a while and I quit art school in Italy. I got into a huge fight with my classical Italian art teacher. Okay. Who, to this day, probably I would talk to, but maybe not apologize to. Okay. <laughs> um, she showed us all these amazing pictures of old art and art history. Okay. And then she really just got on my back and I remember her saying to me, why don't you walk around and look at everybody's art and come back and tell me what you think? Okay. I, you know, I took that as like, first of all, like that's not okay to, you know, say to me. <laughs> I took that as an insult. Mm -hmm. So then I walked around and everybody's painting looked exactly the same, except for mine. Okay. And then I said, I quit. Mm -hmm. I said, if I'm the one who's a problem here, then I can't do this anymore because mm. I'm not gonna change everything for you when all these people don't even know what they're doing. I know I know this sounds crazy, but I just didn't wanna go 3000 miles across right. the world and turn into something I'm not. Okay. She told me I should go back to Art 101 mm. and I, was so happy with what she said. I just packed all my stuff and I left. And mm. then I went back into the school and I used the last two and a half months I had just to use their lab, their art labs. Okay. And all the kids were just coming to me and being like, I wish I did what you did, you know? And, <laughs> and they wouldn't kick me out because I wouldn't sign some waiver. They're like, you have to forfeit your classes. And I'm like, well, if I forfeit my classes, then I can't use your art lab. Right. So I stayed in, in Italy for as long as I could. And, yeah. and I hung out with crazy graffiti artists and, you know, um, did other things that are, the artists that were still in class couldn't do. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, it, it, it sounds like that, you know, if, if you didn't, uh, you know, vacate, you know, that class, you wouldn't have you know, had those other opportunities. I feel like it was the time to go, you know, and yeah. um, I, I really wanted to just draw cartoons. I think that was um, my thing. And maybe I took the wrong classes and Italy wasn't the place to go. Maybe all that, but it really showed me who I was as an artist. And right. I wanted people to laugh and I wanted people to think and I wanted people to feel um, these characters. And okay. I didn't want to have them look like any other artists, you know? Um, I wanted them to look like styles maybe that were inspired by other artists, but mm -hmm. I didn't want them to look like anything else but who they were. Is, you know? is that how you, uh kind of came to uh, focus on uh, like uh, like this style with, uh, you know, so, you have a very stylized, uh, you know, portraiture that- uh, Absolutely. Work so with. this style was not taught to me, but inspired to me by um, an artist that I used to work with in the past. Um, okay. So this is kind of a basis of a regular kind of graffiti art that you would see on the side of a wall. Oh. Um, the diagrams are pretty much, you start with these like big face, big nose people mm -hmm. that have like something like hearts or elongated heads, or they just come out. Um, this whole process 
started with just regular bald people with no heads. Um, well, with no no hair, sorry. Right. <laughs> There's ones with two heads. <laughs> but I mean, like, it all came with just a regular face. So mm -hmm. I believe that that initial face is the blueprint of what happens in my art. Okay. Uh, I can literally start to draw and don't know what I'm drawing. And then all of a sudden I know everything about this person. I know where they came from. I know what they want to look like. I know what, where they want to be in the background. As their um, backstory. Absolutely. It's very personal. Um, almost like I'm channeling um, these people, you okay. know, um, almost like they're, I call them my friends and I call people that buy my art and adoptions process. It's like, <laughs> so, you know, if you ever like don't want to take care of this character anymore, I have no problem buying it back from you or taking it back make sure that um, my kids are okay. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, I, it, it all comes from being inspired and being taught to draw. Um, one of the artists who taught me to draw, his name's Fidel, um, Fidel Contreras. Okay. Um, in uh, Phoenix. And um, he, he, he taught me how to really um, develop my characters so that they had shading personality, so that they had um, some sort of, I guess, symmetry. I'm not super into symmetry, but um, I'm more into each one being um, unique and each one having some sort of message. Sometimes I write something in the background um, or sometimes I um, include a background. I've been using a lot more color. Um, I don't know if people know this, I guess, but I use mostly chalk. <laughs> okay, no kidding. So I actually have my chalk for you guys. Here's my chalk that I use. Oh, cool, okay. Oh wait, these are rolling papers. I use these sometimes too. <laughs> For um, inspiration. Yeah, so this is my chalk. So I use a lot of chalk. Um, okay. The more colors, the better. And they're just amazing. Yeah. Um, chalk is two cents a stick, maybe. Um, I use a lot of newsprint, which gives me the option to make bigger pieces. Right. Um, just because it's recycled paper doesn't mean that it's gonna be less of a quality i actually find it more of a quality the chalk sticks to it way better yeah um people buy fixant for 12 dollars a bottle i use hairnet or aqua <laughs> aquanet it works it works all the same it works absolutely better i think mm -hmm. than any fixant mm -hmm. and chalk is just one of the most forgiving uh, materials i've ever used okay and um when you use it to make a person, the blending creates a character. And it's something almost like I can't take it sometimes. I do get emotional. Wow, okay. Um, well, they're your babies. I'm sorry? They're your babies. They totally are my kids or my friends. I call them my friends, you know. Um, so, um, yeah, I just made this piece for my mom. You guys want to oh, see? you got it? Let's see. Let's read it. Oh, cool. Yeah. So this piece is for my mom. Oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah, I have an affinity for wavy lines, so I love the hair. I just kept going with the hair. I just thought it was yeah. great. You know? Nice. And this is on, like, a nice, um, stocky piece of piece of paper. Okay. Right. A little card stock? Um, yeah, I'm getting into a lot of pastels. Okay. These are some bioluminescent things. Oh, that's pretty cool. I like that. So anything it, on a black paper, it's really nice. Yeah. It, what do you find uh, like the difference between like chalk and pastel? Is there is you still what prefer is, chalk or is it? I'm talking about chalk pastel or oil pastel. Oh, uh, either one. Uh, I I I've I've worked with both, um, but uh, I'd imagine you probably prefer chalk pastel. So I, you know, I like both. Um, oil pastels definitely, um, you have less option to change things, I guess. Um, it's kind of more permanent and fixated. Right. Whereas the chalk, um, so the chalk is really, 
it's really pretty. Um, the people who make the chalk pastels, the pigment is absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Um, I've never really gotten into Melrose Place pastels until I started working <laughs> with chalk. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Man, huge fan now. Um, <laughs> The thing with chalk is that um, you can control it and um, you can start it off really light and um, even add some charcoal into it, some real charcoal. And um, I remember going to the art store and spending like 13 cents and all my friends spend like 400. <laughs> and they're like, what'd you buy? And I'm like, a stick of vine charcoal, a stick of, you know, different two grade charcoal you know, and an eraser. <laughs> but um, the thing with chalk is that it's just, it really feels like you're doing something. You're suddenly covered in color and you're covered in stuff. It gets and everywhere. It, it, it gets everywhere. Um, I hope you're wearing a mask because I remember like, you know, using chalk and, you know, like, you know, I'd breathe in and it's just like, oh, God, then my, my yeah, skin is like, multicolored. It gets rough. Um, it gets more rough on your fingertips. Right. So, um, if I, you know, if I have to take care of my child or anything, it's all with the wrists at that point. <laughs> like, mm. But it's not toxic. I'm not yeah. sure if Simpson's toxic. I'll have to look into that. But yeah, I think, I think they figured out ways around that. <laughs> well, and and you know, uh, I think uh, I I think uh, you can. Uh, like they gear a lot of uh, you know marketing, you know to kids, you know with chalk anyway. So I mean, what a what a fun medium for for a kid to get into. Uh, off camera, you were saying you that know, if he eats it, he won't die, and that's great. <laughs> yeah, let's 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 make sure that doesn't happen. <laughs> it would never happen. It would never happen. But yes, just in case, just in case. Well, and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, um, you were you were mentioning too that your 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 child's you know really getting into to the arts. What what what's his name? His name's Donovan. Oh, Donovan, like the singer awesome. from the seventies. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's pretty sweet. I, I'm not Irish at all, Dan, but I just wanted an Irish name. His name is um, Donovan Patrick. Oh. That's and he was cute. born like the day before St. Patrick's Day, so right. that fit. <laughs> and his grandfather's name is Patrick, so okay. Don Donovan. Yeah, it was, it just sounded right, you know. And um, I'm just so happy it's, it was a boy. Yeah. <laughs> can I say that? Oh, you you can say whatever. Uh, so, uh, Girls tend to be a little tougher, or I'm not just... against girls. It's just um, I'm super into dinosaurs and you know oh, and all that stuff. And oh, cool, so Venom it... and all that stuff. So. Yeah. so it sounds like you want to share the you know the stuff that that you like you know uh, with with him even I, more. You know, I, I showed him a monster truck rally the other day, and it was wow. the happiest day of his life. And <laughs> I got a few minutes to. You know, do, do what I need to do, so it works out. <laughs> nice. That's cool. Well, that's uh, that sounds like a lot of fun. It's so much um, fun. So uh, I, I think, you know, I, I can't remember uh, how much, uh, you know, with uh, – I mean, you're, you're doing uh, a lot of different things because you also have, like, uh, is it art management – yeah, or art. So, uh, um, before COVID, I did put together an art management company called yeah. Assorted Arts. Right, which is the the website streaming along with uh, Sky's Instagram. But don't go there yet. And you, you don't have to yet. You can save it for later. Yeah. Um, it was, so I, I'm actually um, one of the most luckiest artists in the world to have moved in with another artist here in Berkeley. So I have a bedroom and I have my studio connected to my bedroom that oh, cool. connects to a beautiful garden. And oh, so does my roommate. He has a his bedroom and his studio, which is connected to the guardian, gar garden. And he's amazing. Um, his name is Benji Friedman. I'm his biggest fan. He just puts like the most amazing art all around our house. 
Oh, I'll cool. totally fill you guys in later. Huge fan. Um, I'm lucky enough to be around um, the same kind of consciousness, I guess, if you want to say. Um, the best type of consciousness that I can right now. Um, we have been making some really strange videos of us um, throwing paint at each other on, um, well, I'm wearing like random blank clothes, wearing goggles and right. all kind of just so hidden, hidden, hidden videos that are so good, really. Um, I think like you can, you can text me and I'll send them to you. Okay. But it's like throwing paint at each other, making some really great clothes. If you give me a second, I'll show you. Okay, sure. One moment. <laughs> All right. All right. So um, here's here's a really here's a really great dress. Okay, so this kind of harkens back to your fashion days it too. It totally gets back to it, but it's really yeah. um, not my not my thing. Um, this is all kind of him. So we're doing these like kind of crazy. Oh, those are fun. Yeah, they're like so they're like dress, hand, sundress, yeah, hand splash dresses. That is actually really cool. They're hand splash dresses, and then we've got a couple um, really strange. Here, let's see. Here we go. So these are all the skirts. Ah. Wow, that's pretty yeah. much. It looks like it's like so much cooler. It's like so much cooler than I even thought when I know that I'm looking at it. Nice. Yeah, that's that's pretty fun. It looks like melted sherbet. It looks like um like a million neon crayons from the 80s. Onto me, and maybe some mustard a little bit. That's uh, I, I they think look, they look so that. good. I think you guys have the the beginnings of a a fashion line. You know, yeah. Use those videos I mean, to, to promote. You know, it. I've been trying to uh, coax him into the public eye for fashion, and he's sure. a little. Uh, I think he's down. Maybe I was talking to him. There you go. You got you got something else to to help. You know, get you through COVID and hopefully you know, you know, pay the, the bills. Other, the other things are really just um, making um, I have vests and other things, um, but they're so beautiful. Once they're on the clothes, they're so pretty, really. Um, that's probably going to be next month. We'll probably um, start organizing um, another clothing line and cool. um, definitely more collaborations to come. I mean, nice. Um, it, with the uh, collaborations too, you sent me some photos. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you explain? Uh, yeah, like this. Yes. This is like a, a team project. So that is actually all me. Um, so right. I was asked right. to do. I was asked to do some. Um, they're dumpsters, but they're also toolboxes, yeah. and those were for the um, Symbiosis Festival for um, a group called Drift. So they had one year where they set up by the lake and the actual festival wouldn't let them keep their tools by the lake because their toolboxes were an eyesore. So they had to walk like over mm -hmm. a mile to go get anything. Oh, so next awesome. year they asked me to um, decorate them for them so that they could keep them by the river. And um, those were all funded by um, Eddie from the Drift Project. He let me use he he let me use their lifts. Everything there, like, it was so fun. Um, so, but yeah, um, that was more like my um, that was more of a huge project that I wanted to do, um, and it turned out looking a lot like re like the Transformers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can see that. This looks like the Constructicons. It was one of my favorite projects I did. And it was really all, um, I just used tape and um, spray cans. Nice. And I'm so happy that they let me do that. I was not, I was, I wasn't more proud that year of a project than that one. It was really, really fun. That's that's cool. Yeah, I wouldn't have expected that was from you because it's it's so stylistically it's so outside of what I know. You know, I had a whole thing drawn up, and I, I had a whole thing drawn up, and uh -huh. I ended up just 
tossing it and just taking it off and doing it straight from there. So yeah, I'm really, really, really happy with that. Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, that's uh, that that's pretty cool. It, it seems like you're 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 trying and doing a lot of things that are outside uh, your your comfort zone. Um, I think, um, like the characters are like what I'd love to see in my own art, and really what I want on my wall. Um, and where everything else is just kind of um, for fun, just to kind of show people what's what's going on. Um, that that's uh, this was this was one of my art shows at. Um, it's called Pancakes and Booze. You guys have it in Denver too. Yeah, they I've uh, they've reached out to me a couple times. Yeah. Um, so I I've been with them. I haven't shown with them in a really long time, but I've made some amazing friends through them, oh, and cool. they're still friends to this day. Um, just amazing artists that show for that project. Yeah. So um, they really really deserve some credit. These uh, artists that come out there and you know. Um, have to pay people to do things. I know, but pancakes and booze is pretty fair. They'll, they're only like 10, 15 bucks and then thousands of people come through the spot. So it actually has been pretty beneficial and we all got to meet each other and now we're still working with each other. You know, it's just kind of a really good meeting ground. Um, the, I can't remember, I think his name is Jonathan mm -hmm. who owns uh, pancakes and booze. If he ever goes to that spot, Shoot him a message if you're an artist, because he's he's really fair and he's a really cool guy. Nice. So, yeah, check him out. That's that's cool. It, it sounds like uh, you know, in all your travels, you uh, you keep in touch with friends and and uh, absolutely you have created a, a nice support system. That's a hundred percent of really everything that you do. You can't be a dick and well, maybe you could be a dick and be successful. <laughs> I don't advise it. Don't do that. No, you know. Um, I mean, Pollock and no. Okay, now I'm throwing out names. But I'm just saying, like, you, you, you could potentially be successful um, being an artist without a support system. But, you know, I, I really highly suggest just really reaching out to fellow artists that, like, understand that you're not just an egotistical asshole and you just want to keep everything to yourself. Um <laughs> Honestly, um, your family and your friends and the people that have known you in the past um, is a huge, just a huge support system for you um, as an artist. Um, I very rarely sell my art to uh, people who just call me out of the blue saying they found me. And sure, I'd like to change that. Sure, I'd like a bunch of strangers to call me and be interested in my art. But I'm also more interested in people like, that I know like really supporting me, it really keeps you going. And it means so, so much. Buying a piece of artwork from a friend of yours who's an artist, it means so much to them. And I cannot, cannot tell you more um, how appreciative we are. Absolutely, it just keeps us going. So- That's, um, that's cool. Yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah. the, the art world is, a, is, is a, a big, you know, communal space and, and yeah, it's, um, if, if you're able to, to support each other, uh, definitely do it, especially now, you know, so many especially now need support and need help, you know, whether it's the individual artist or, you know, a creative business or just a business in general. I, I, I almost feel like you're, um, putting energy into a person other than an artist, you know, you're giving people that have, um, creative vision, a hope and right. your, um, prolonging that through their children, through through everything, when, when you support your your artists, when you support fellow artists. And it could be something as simple as watching a live stream or buying a comic book or um, buying a piece, you know? Yeah. Um, it's, it's definitely something that um, it changes us and we change yeah. things for you. So. Yeah, most definitely. Oh, that's awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah. So, Sky, you know, it sounds like you got a couple projects, um, you know, that are in development right now, especially with the, right. the comedy, the skits, and, and, and the fashion stuff. What are you really looking forward to, uh, you know, to really, you know, knock out in the upcoming year? So, um, I really am into the comedy thing right now. Um, the cartoon thing is definitely something I want to do. Um, here, I'm getting organized. Um, 
I think I really just want to try and make some people laugh really this year um, through my art and through other things. Um, I'm really into a, um, there's a few homeless charities that are starting up right now that are giving up opportunity to homeless artists and giving them free art supplies and also a place to, place to um, so there's a organization looking for venues mm. that anybody wants to help in the San Francisco or Bay Area um, area to please let me know, um, helping homeless people be able to get back on their feet that are creatives or artists or even um, people that build stage sets, all those kind of things. Um, I think really right now is to help bring art into a place in our new economy where we're not sure what to invest in and we're not sure what um, helps. Um, there's a lot of people who have no money and there's a lot of people who have a lot of money. And um, I think what can help people the most is to bring that hope and the opportunity to people who can create some things for us that we don't even know possible that right. don't have those supplies or don't have those opportunities. Um, so I think a lot right now is to um, really focus on um, our next generations and the people who are hurting from this pandemic so right. that they can start kind of getting back on their feet and um, realizing that there is a space for them in this world. Yeah. Um, I know that things have become so bad where funding pretty much all around the states in the United States yeah. have put out any kind of things that they call elective, which is any kind of film or any kind of, um, yeah, anything that they don't feel would be pertinent to um, our recovery from this. And um, I think the really important thing is to um, start contributing to people that can help artists come along um, so that we can I'm try and finish the sentence. It's so hard. It's tough. It's, <laughs> How it's about tough more like Dan Crozier? So I say it right? <laughs> Cro Crozier, 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 dipshit, uh, hey fucker. I answer to a lot of things. <laughs> Not all of them are very good, but you know, I still respond. So that's good, I suppose. Good. Uh, but but yeah, to, you know, I think to that point, uh, you know, uh, we, working with uh, with artists, working with homeless people, and, and trying to elevate everybody, um, you know, creative people. That's what what gives society culture, and Absolutely. and certainly elevates that that experience. Because because without that, there's really not much to live for. Um, yeah, I, I guess sex and beer. Without that, it's like North uh, Korea. True, very true. Um, I didn't mean that. No, maybe I did. Yeah, I think I, 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 thought, I saw North Korea on the satellite last night and there's like no lights, you know, at night. <laughs> so yeah, it's like, whoa, they need yeah, there are over there. <laughs> the, the people there are, 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 I mean, not only under a, a cruel yeah, dictatorship, oh, but thirsty. Yeah, they're they're. Uh, I mean, they're they're hurting really bad because most of their supplies come from China. And my, my understanding is they've almost been you know completely cut off because you know China's hurting too. So my uh, dad lives in Seoul, so he's in oh, South Korea. Oh, yeah, so nice. he keeps telling me to get off my ass and move to Korea, where I can become a famous artist. Where I'm like, I don't think it's that easy, Dad. And he's like, kind of, it kind of is, you know. Where I'm like. Well, what would what would your purpose be then if you moved to South Korea? It was like you know, get as many North Korean artists to happen, you know. Like I, yeah. I would just get so well, much trouble. <laughs> well, I mean, don't, I don't don't art and shoes over across the border, you know, yeah. just so that they had have art in their lives, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> it, it, you know, right now is a great time for you know those type of. Uh, you know, cultural revolutions where, where right. lives get changed, yeah. preferably for the better, 
not Ooh. like what we had, you know, in the Capitol a couple weeks ago with a, a bunch of fucking yahoos. But they need more uh, art. They need more art in their lives. <laughs> they, they need. They need that. Um, and 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 uh, to be deprogrammed, I think too. And and they definitely need clown noses. Tons of clown noses. Um, most definitely. Remote viewing clowns. That's what we need. Yeah, you, you know, when, when, when topics get get tough, you know, we can always count on Sky to bring out the, you know, the the clown nose and cut the, the ice, you know, break the ice. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's yeah, it's a tough time, and and hopefully it gives uh, it gives opportunity for for new new things to be presented. Absolutely. And, uh, it's time for us to really like get to the next generation and to make them feel like it's an ability it, that it's something that's able for them to be successful. Um, I, you know, a lot of kids that are around, mm -hmm. not many from COVID, but they feel that they want to be artists, but it's not going to work out for them. And, you know, it's so important for us to really understand how much arts helped us through this whole pandemic. Right. You know? well, Clearly, those who are buying your art right now, um, that's helping them. Absolutely. You know, and, so. and them. And I feel so humbled and so grateful. Yeah, it's it's but, definitely a, a wonderful thing. Uh, Alana just chimed in. Hi. Truth. So, uh, so she's appreciating what you're saying. Nice. Thank you, Alana. Love you. <laughs> so. Well, uh, cool, Sky. Uh, we're just about out of time. Uh, All right. I wanna, you know, thank you for for coming on and, and sharing more about your story and what you do and 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 thank just being you, able Dan. to catch up with you because it's been it's been a, you know a couple what months years maybe. And just give give yourself a hug for me. Can we do that. A little, little bear hug. There you go. A little bear hug. <laughs> I got a bear. I got a gun. That's the so. bear essentials, Mister. Yeah, it's the bare essentials. That's right. Yeah. Um, no, I really appreciate you having me on the show. And um, anybody who has any questions for me or for Dan, you can always you can always comment on here. We'll be uh, watching this. And uh, yeah, make sure everybody uh, visit uh, uh, Sky's website, uh, assortedarts.com, uh, and follow her on Instagram at uh, Sky Light for Serious. Uh, so yeah, definitely, uh, you yeah, know, check out our work there. Um, and you can see, uh, some more, uh, clown noses and, uh, hopefully some, uh, some splatter clothes too. This one's broken. Yeah. I, I hate broken noses and you know, they never heal right. It's always crooked. Uh Oh, there goes your light. I guess that's, that's the time. Hang out for Dan, Thank you so much for everything. And sure. Cafe Crash is my favorite show. I just oh, have to my favorite show, hands hands down. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So hang out for a little bit, Sky. Uh, to everybody that uh, is tuned in, thanks so much for tuning in and, and watching us. And uh, you know, hey, uh, thanks to uh, my sponsor, uh, Mutiny Information Cafe. Uh, go go get caffeinated. Go read books and uh, start a creative revolution. Yay! And uh, guys, yeah, thanks so much for tuning in and uh, right. us. Yeah, everybody, uh, be good, uh, be safe out there. Uh, Alana says ma mahalo. mahalo, mahalo, Nuiwa. She's from Hawaii too. She's oh, good. fantastic, mahalo, and uh, yeah, be safe, be good out there. Take care of each other. Yeah, help each other out. We love you. Life for seriously, be good to each other.